tell me a little bit about you know you getting a lot of uh, you know property management um you know other people wanting to you know for you to to take their deals or not their deals sorry uh to take their properties and manage their properties and things like that how is it you went from doing property management from your just all your property where you're the only one you have to answer to to now a lot of other people that even though they're paying you now you still have to kind of answer to them as as owners of the property yeah you've got to have a temperament uh property management <laughs> Property management is really tough when you're the owner, and then it's doubly tough when you're in the middle of the tenant and the owner. So I had a client, I had a client recently on the property <laughs> side, who said, uh, "No, we're we're not fixing that." And I had to go to the tenant saying, "Sorry, we're not fixing that." And then the tenant said, "Okay, well, if you're not fixing it, I'm not paying rent." So then you got to go back to the client and say, "We really need to fix it if they're going to stop paying rent." And then the client mm -hmm. said, "No, a victim." So then I go back and I say, "Hey." look if you're you know we technically don't need to fix that and if you don't pay your rent then we're going to have to evict you and she said okay evict me so then i go back to him and he says evict me and i go back to her you know so that that's yeah. the tough part of property management and if you don't have the temperament for it where you're just uh doing it more in like a robotic fashion instead of getting like all excited and all you know angry and the passions run high you're not going to last uh very long and so really it's, it's just focusing on the facts and focusing on the document um, and trying to keep the emotions out of it. So 100% and I, I deal, I wholesale a lot of properties and uh, um, probably I started wholesaling and I still do a little bit inside Detroit. What areas would you see, are you seeing, because I know you do property management inside Detroit. Um, what areas are you seeing that are good areas i there's a lot of bad bad areas and things like that but what are good areas to invest in um in detroit yeah. and what what do you look for in screening your tenants in order to make sure that you don't have to go to the eviction process as least as possible <laughs> yeah so the city of detroit is tough right now because default <clears throat> rates are skyrocketing i was just hired to manage 136 apartments in 30 different buildings in the city of Detroit as a property management client. And in the 136 units, uh, over 60 or 70 tenants are delinquent in their rent. Um, and that's really just an impossible situation uh, where more than 50% of the tenants are delinquent in their rent. You want to have like five, six, seven percent at the very most of your tenants being delinquent in their rent. This, this client has 50% uh, 50, 50 plus uh, delinquent. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I am not a Detroit neighborhood expert and I can't speak to that question as well. I would like, I'm a, I'm a Detroit property manager expert. You give me a building in Detroit, I'll manage it, uh, as good as anybody, but I can't tell you what neighborhood to invest in and what not to. Uh, but if you send me an email, I can introduce you to a few folks who can, that's what I say. Oh, that's awesome. I, when, when I don't know the answer to the question, I say, send me an email and I'll introduce you to the guy who knows. <laughs> most definitely and that's the key thing is is that uh you know there's a lot of people back in my this is just my opinion because i've i've been wholesaling a lot in detroit um you know since i started and a lot of people think okay this is back in you know 2020 2021 oh we're still there where you you can be a vic it, it takes nine months to a year to to evict you and even though they made it harder the the state has made it harder still for us to uh, 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 evict in inside detroit uh it's still a lot faster than it was when we did have COVID. we can actually get court dates you know yeah um and so on and so forth but um <clears throat> you know hopefully how do you screen your tenants to try yeah. to avoid as much of that yeah, our, our requirements in the state of Michigan are a 600 minimum credit score, three times okay. income, no evictions, no bankruptcy, no collections mm -hmm. other than maybe some minor medical collections, 
and a good rental reference. And if you don't have that, we require a uh, co-signer. Uh, obviously, that works much better in downtown Ann Arbor than it does in a neighborhood in Detroit or Flint or Pontiac. But you've just got to be uh, careful and, and select your residents. Uh, you know, you've got to select your best applicants in, in those areas. Right. And you can you can flex on those requirements if necessary. If you're not getting the to keep the occupancy you want, you can lower those requirements a bit and, and, and tweak them. And Emmett was actually saying that Sierra funds are are a big problem and actually i think sierra funds have actually grown out have, have you heard that yeah we're done we're done i haven't filled out a sarah application in probably six months and we just got our last payment maybe two weeks ago i don't really expect okay. any other sarah payments I, maybe, yeah maybe i think they stopped, they stopped taking applications yeah, maybe a few and maybe a few in Detroit are still coming, but that that's kind of uh, gone by the wayside. Um, yes. Now, do the judges know that and respect that? That's another uh, thing. We'll see how they play it out. But um, yeah, uh, Sarah created a major cultural problem mm -hmm. uh, where we've got people that were paying the rent just fine until COVID happened. Nothing yeah. happened to, them to affect their income. They just got in the habit of not paying and now they're not paying still. It's a, it, it created some cultural. And with that said, it did help out people legitimately too. I've got a, I've got dozens of examples I could rattle off about how it really helped both the landlord and the tenant, but there's no question that some people are taking advantage of it. Yeah, so I'm gonna ask another question. Is what is your stance on rent control policy from Lansing? Uh, some legislators are, are trying to introduce the, the bills. Uh, yeah. Have you heard anything about that? Yeah, I don't get really too concerned about what happens in the economy, and I don't really get too concerned about what happens uh, from a political standpoint because yep. I've just always outsmarted and outworked the competition. And so if, if they pass rent control, obviously that'll put a cap on the value of real estate. It'll probably yep. pro break buying opportunities, unexpected buying opportunities, and we'll figure out a way to to get around it. Rent control is also illegal at the federal level, so I don't see anything that anyone at the state of Michigan would do would affect that, but um, yeah. I, don't spend, I don't spend too much time on that. What I spend time on is evaluating off-market mid-size apartment buildings and just buy, buy them and manage them. Yeah, so that brings us to an, another question is, is what, you know, what are you, um, like how you acquire these properties? Are you going out and buying a loan or are you doing this straight through your syndication and through your capital, at, through BO Capital? Um, I mean, how does, how would say you don't have that, say you're me, okay? And I don't have nothing like that. How would, how would you say I go out and buy a 20 unit apartment building? Would you buy saving, just saving up 20% down or? If you've got limited cash and you've got a deal, uh, what you should do is put together a small partnership, uh, an LLC, where you are an investor and then you invite several other investors into the deal, set it up, not as a syndication, but as like a joint venture. And you just have, like, let's say it's a four unit apartment building. It's a $400,000 price, $100,000 cash, $300,000 loan, but you only have 25,000 and you need 75,000 for investors. You just create a, uh, you just create an LLC and have uh, three guys come in for 25,000 each and then the four of you own the, the deal. And then you charge them some fees to put it together because mm -hmm. you know, you're the one doing the work, so. Right, so, um, so I'm always looking for deals that I can bring partners in and, and I say, um you know they bring in the money i'll i'll run the project you know so therefore i get whatever we agree upon whether it be they don't have to do anything so therefore you know they get 50 percent of the deal i get 50 percent or or 70 30 or however we work it out yeah and you know so is that something realistic that a investor uh would do 
Uh, I, I would say that you need to invest some of your own capital uh, because okay. like, yeah, me as an investor, I'm not investing in something unless someone's investing in some of their own capital. But if you're young and starting out, it doesn't need to be a lot. Uh, right. You know, I'd put in I'd put in three quarters of it. You know, if yeah. the guy a quarter and doing it. You know. Okay. Oh, that, that's good to know. That's you know that that's where I'm I'm trying to you know for me. Because the thing is, is that I, all my wholesaling money actually has gone to my, and, I, and I've been open with this with my channel, that we've been, uh, all our wholesaling money has gone to um, updating our personal house. So, yeah. you know, I got to make the wife happy first. That's first right. and foremost. So, <laughs> so after that is done then I'll be able to start saving up and actually doing deals of my own. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, and I yeah. do want to get I, into multiple family. Yeah. And I say one, one thing at a time for sure. Uh, just keep hustling and, and getting that first goal accomplished and then start saving money for, for multifamily. Mm -hmm. awesome. And, uh, I, uh, Randy, we've been going for an hour and seven minutes. I got to yep. wrap. Got any final questions? Yeah. So sorry about that. Uh, oh, just no problem. One, Love it. Yeah. So no, just just one last question is is where are you going in the future? So what are, what is your future goals and what do you what do you have that maybe anybody here could even help you out with uh, or anything like that? Yeah, okay, great. So my my career goal is to buy bigger, nicer, easier to manage stuff. Uh, the easiest spot spot to get started is class C, class D value add need a ton of work type projects and that's naturally where a lot of guys start out and that's where i started out and i've been dealing with for a long time i'd like to sell some of that harder to manage stuff and trade it into some nicer easier to manage stuff buildings where you can attract the highest of quality people the highest credit scores the highest incomes uh, people that treat your property better than some others might so that's one of my uh career goals and then people that are listening to this the way you can help me is invest with me you know contact me at bealcapital.com or on facebook or on linkedin i'm Stuart beal um or also hire us to manage your property we'll manage property anywhere in the state of michigan whether it's a single family home up to the largest property we ever managed was a 468 unit apartment building and then mm -hmm. also uh, if you're a contractor listening, we always need good contractors. And then also, if you need help with something that you are working on, you have questions, you want me to look at a deal with you, I'll give anyone an hour of my time uh, and um, gladly uh, look at a project with you, meet up for lunch. I do lunches a yep. lot too, where we meet together three, four guys at a time. So yeah, let's, let's stay in touch. Let's keep uh, networking. Awesome. Yeah, so Emmett does did ask, uh, do you deal do deals out of Michigan? And obviously, we know you do in Ohio um, because you said Toledo. Um, yeah. And he said, if so, where? So, is there any yeah. other places? Yeah. So I just invest an hour within the drive distance of my house, basically, and that's in I live in Ypsilanti, so that covers Toledo, anywhere in Metro Detroit, and uh, Lansing. Although I did make an investment in Grand Rapids, just because. I think that it's a really fast growing area and so you know I thought that might be a good idea but mostly just uh, close by I want to be able to see it touch and feel it yep awesome and then are you doing any development where you may be buying a big chunk of land and building apartment buildings I've never bought a building I've never built a building excuse me because construction cost in the state of Michigan has always been 300 percent higher than you could buy in a building for uh, as an example, I bought a 60 unit in Monroe that came with some vacant land and I asked mm -hmm. a contract to quote building the 60 unit and I bought the 60 units that were there for 2 million and he said it would cost 12 million to build the next 60 units. So obviously that oh, doesn't, wow. doesn't work, you know, so oh, I've never, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to, but I've never done it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, Great conversation. Yeah, most definitely. And we appreciate it. We appreciate you coming on this channel and seeing anything. And if you have any questions for Stuart Beal, get a hold of him at Beal Capital. Uh, uh, you know, any of his link, his LinkedIn, his, his Facebook channels, or anything like that. And you can also invest with them as well. So I really do appreciate you coming on on with us and at least showing us that you know, hey. Anybody can do it as well. Um, 
And I really, really, honestly, like it actually helps me a lot that, you know, talking about when you started when you were a kid, I think that more parents should should have started out like your parents did. Awesome. Um, and I, I'm trying to get, that's another goal of mine eventually, once I get successful with this channel is I, you know, hit as much younger people as possible so they can uh, get that in their head as early as possible. Awesome. So, let, let me e leave you with my email address. It's uh, sbeal, yeah. S-B-E-A-L at gobeal, G-O-B-E-A-L.com and email me as well. Awesome. So awesome. definitely do that. And if again, if you have any questions, if you have any deals or anything like that, get a hold of get a hold of Stuart Beal. You can also JV with me. My number is here and my email is in the uh, description below. I appreciate it, Stuart. Hope All you right, have a great day. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye.